Well, hello, this is Shirley from Shirley's Art Ventures, and today I'm going to show you how to make a scrubby using sugar and cream cotton yarn, and that's going to be the cream color, and peaches and cream cotton yarn, and that is going to be the blue color. The scrubby is going to match the dishcloth that I made and I have a tutorial for. So the other things you're going to need for a scrubby is a crochet hook. This is size G, 4.25 millimeters. A yarn needle and scissors. To start our scrubby, we're going to take our contrasting color, which is blue in this occasion, and we're going to crochet 21 chains and I'm trying to find the end of my yarn. So you start off by making a slip knot and putting your crochet hook in and then 21 in this chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So that is our foundation row. So we're going to come back, and, and since this is a, going to be a spiral scrubby, there are some fun little things you are going to do with this. So we're going to be at increasing. So we're going to crochet, chain one, and we're going to increase on one end and decrease on the other end. So this end, we're going to do one single crochet, and then two single crochets. And now we're going to do 17 single crochets across this chain. So one, two, oh, don't you hate it when your yarn splits? Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17. And in order to make the spiral, you need to, need to do a decrease. So we decrease by going in the next one, pull through, and go into the next one, and pull through again, and then yarn over and pull through all three and just a yarn over at the end. So we increase on one side and decrease on the other side. So this is a time when we are going to change color. So every two rows we are changing color. So we're going to do a slip knot and pull it through and we're going to be adding this on as our new color. So we're just going to pull it through the loop you had and then you're just going to tighten that up. So we're going to tighten up the blue and tighten up the cream. And now we're going to start the cream color. And this is where we're doing our decrease. So I'm just going to chain one to just get it going here. And I'm going to work you through the first couple of rows here to get you going here. And we're going to do the decrease by going in the back loop 
of the next stitch pull through go in the back loop of the next stitch pull through and then pull through all three of those so that is our decrease so 17 more one two in the back loops so you're going to have ridges all the way across three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen now the next one you're going to do your increase so the next stitch in the back loop of the next stitch you're going to be putting two single crochets so one two so in this row you got your decrease on one side and your increase on the other side so now you're going to turn it and come back so you're going to pro, um, chain one and then you're going to do two single crochets into the next chain so one two and we're going to do 17 again so it's important to count otherwise it gets wonky and i know from experience so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen so this is a decrease side you have two more so you're going to combine those together to decrease it so you go to the back of the next one pull through go to the back of the next one pull through you have three on your hook so you're going to pull through all three and there's your decrease decrease chain one and now we're going to change colors again so we're going to bring the blue up and we're going to pull it through the current loop that's on the hook so you pull it through the current loop and you tighten it down and then you chain one just get it prepared to go back and you turn it and then you're going to start right away with the decrease so you're going to go in the back you're going to be skipping this one this is the one you pulled through you're going to be going into the back of the next one and then the back of the next one to do your decrease then you're going to go across again 17 do the increase at the end turn it do the increase on the next end come back do the decrease change colors and then do the decrease so continue doing these rows until you get about 22 rows or so we we're probably going to end up with about 24 or 25 the original pattern said 22 i found that didn't really work for it because it didn't create the right size so I found if I went 24 or 25 rows, that was better. So I will continue on and I will meet you back at the end to show you how you finish this off. 
Okay, we've crocheted our basic scrubby Amos counter rows here. So each of these is like two rows. So we're just going to start counting with this one here. So this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So this will make a good length to um, to sew it together. So I'm going to show you both sides. There's one side and there's the other side. This side to me is the front side. It just looks neater. It looks prettier. And this edge here is where you pull your colors up through to the next one. So you have to determine how to sew your scrubby together. Now with my scrubby here, I started with the blue and it's intentional that I am going to do another blue row connecting this side with this side. So I ended my cream colored row and I'm going to be pulling the blue up through and we are going to connect these two together. Now when I first got the pattern they say you fold one side in and the other side in and you connect in the middle. I, I tried that. that. That didn't work right. Didn't work right for me. So I found it easier to just figure out where your outside rows are, not your not your raw edges, not your, but the beginning and the ending row, and then you just kind of fold it over, and then you're going to connect those two together. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to crochet them together. So in order to do that, we're going to have to pull the blue up through. And we're going to be ending the, the cream color because we really don't need the cream color anymore. So I'm going to do just a, a chain and I'm going to pull the blue up through. And we're going to tighten that down and I'm going to get rid of my cream color because it's just going to probably get in the way. So I'm going to trim that off and toss that aside. So now we're going to determine the outside to get these together. So this is the outside. So we're going to put the insides together and we're going to be crocheting along the outside. And we do that in order to create the ridge. So we're going to tighten up the blue here and kind of get everything all arranged, you know. I suppose you could pin it. I, I don't do that. I just, I, I often wing everything. My life is a, is a winging thing. So I'm going to try to match up my corners the best I can. And, you know, it's kind of a, in a way, it's a guessing game. So match up my corners and we're just going to pull through to get us started here. So I'm going to pull through to get us started. Now we're actually going to start doing single crochets. So doing the single crochets we're going to go in the just like we did before in the back side of the one row that we just came out of which is the white row and like the bottom of the blue row so that's the very beginning we had there so that's your beginning chain so you know you just do the best you can trying to match them up so as you go across you're automatically going to be getting a ridge so you're going to be doing a single crochet all the way across. So I'm making the ridges forming in the white and there's also going to be a ridge forming in the blue due to the single crochet. So this works and it does look pretty nice when you're done. Just kind of automatically will make it for you. Then you got to determine where your next stitch is which is right here and if it doesn't quite come off perfectly you can kind of adjust as you go that's one thing nice about this you know it doesn't have to be perfect you can adjust as you go and then you can hide things in the end so continue across with your single crochet and I, I like these colors together they look pretty so this will go really nice with the dishcloth that I made and then my mom also, you know, does towel toppers. So say we find a blue towel to match this. Wouldn't that be a really elegant little Christmas gift for your friend? Uh, a scrubby, a dishcloth, and a beautiful towel all matching. Well, that is a thought for another day. But 
Anyway, that's, you know, kind of conversation to have today. Well, today is Labor Day. We are planning to go to Cave in the Mountains later on. I, we went on Saturday. I was all excited to go to Cave in the Mountains because, you know, I have been on vacation and I've done a number of caves. And Cave in the Mountains is like 20 minutes away from here. And I don't know, everybody else thought it was a great day to go to Cave in the Mountains too. They had a two and a half hour wait to go through the cave. So we decided it was just easier to probably go back. So I have tickets. Uh, the tickets aren't for any certain time. They're just to, to be at the cave. So we'll probably go over there and get in line and wait for my son to come over with his friend. So then we'll go through the cave. It's a self-guided tour, which is, you know, kind of sad because we're used to guided tours. But in this day of COVID, you know, you're just lucky to have a tour. I was fascinated the other day with how many people were actually at Cave of the Mounds. Uh, there were people from all over there. It, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful park. So if you ever get a chance to get to Blue Mounds, go to go to Cave of the Mounds. When I was at a cave in Kentucky, I found a brochure from Cave of the Mounds. So that was kind of cool too. And if I wouldn't have found that brochure, I probably wouldn't be going to Cave of the Mounds. So we're getting near the end here. As you can see, it's not going to totally... Well, it might drive up, but it's not going to totally drive up. So I'm just going to crochet two into the same spot in a couple of places. And that will drive our ends together. Like I said, this is not a perfect thing. If it's like a sweater or something, you may want it to be perfect. But if this is scrubby, you're going to do dishes with it. And, you know, I don't think your dishes really care if it's not perfect. As long as your dishes get clean. And this is like the cotton thread, so, you know, it'll wash really easily. And you know, it's kind of a fun little, fun little project. Okay, I'm just going to finish up here, and I'm going to call it a day. Okay, I'm going to do this extra one. Now I'm going to have a fairly substantial amount of thread here, of yarn, because we're going to have to weave it next. So we're going to pull, pull my... Pull it through, and there it's kind of like a kind of like a little wristband here. So you know you got kind of your mess on the one side, and what I've been doing with this is I've been trying to tie things off too. So I'll just do some tying here, little square knots, to get things out of the way, and then they'll get tucked in. They'll get trimmed off and and tucked in. And I might actually use those to help tie things later. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to have to go around the edges and sew it and, and make it come together. So we do that by taking our needle and our thread and you're going to thread your needle with your thread with the yarn with the yarn and just kind of randomly weave around the outside here. So, oh, you know, when I was traveling, I didn't have the yarn needle. I, I kept losing them. I lost, I lost two in the couch. I lost one in the couch for sure, and one I didn't know where it went to. And then my husband said, "Oh, he's he found my yarn needle." A, few, a week later, saying he stepped on it. I, okay, wonderful. So it's my fault if he steps on something. Last year, he said he stepped on some of my resin art, and oh goodness, and that called cause planters fasciitis and you know it hurt like heck so I ended up getting him a brace for his foot after you know he went through months or whatever and that that helped so then I ended up getting him another brace for night so he had a, a day brace and a night brace and, and of course still he said it was my resin piece of resin stuff I don't know can't guarantee that I was working with the resin and it was you know falling down at places when you pop out artwork and you know things do you know fall down sometimes and I would try to find it sweep it up get it out of the way but apparently he said I didn't do enough but I don't know no guarantees on that you know husbands you know sometimes they you know they think they're strong but anyway so I am going around the outside of this 
just kind of weaving it through and then when I get back to the beginning we're going to pull it tight and then we're going to tie it off and then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing and when you pull it all together it's going to be a spiral scrubby So I guess I'll, oh, maybe I'll just keep talking here. I am going to be doing my video of my weekly project sometime today. Am I back at the beginning here? Uh, maybe I am. You can determine that by pulling it. Oh, sure enough, I'm back at the beginning. Yay! Yeah, didn't that work out nicely? It looks like a little hat now. So then you got to kind of tie this together here. So you just kind of pick a random spot and... You know, make sure it's it's really tied well so it's not going to come undone. And you can tie it a couple of times like that. Sometimes there's the threads are sticking out there, so you can tie them with the threads. Well, I don't want to tie it with that thread. Tie it with the threads that are there. But make sure the hole is is pretty well tied shut because you don't you, know, you want your scrubby to be nice. Okay, now I'm going to pull this through, through my hole, to the other side, and that's going to just kind of pull it in. So, I'm going to come out the other side, and I'm going to have my little ends here, and I think I'll choose, let's, let's just choose right up here where the blue is. So, I know this is my starting point, is where these two are. So, I am going to go around this side. And do the same thing as I did before just go all the way around with the needle and then I'm going to be pulling it tight and am I getting off camera I I might be because it is kind of an awkward setup here that's how it is you know I drag my stuff out when I do this maybe someday I'll have a filming studio I I don't know I kind of doubt it because we'll see you never know you know, I wanted to do YouTube videos probably about five five years ago when I first discovered YouTube um, tutorials. You know, I'd seen YouTube before that with music, but then I discovered these tutorials, and I just thought it was really fun learning how to do these different projects. I learned how to do watercolor by watching the YouTube tutorials, and then then I watch a couple people like all the time. And this one gal, she sells things and, and she has quite the following so i watch her a lot her name is bailey j and she's out of canada this other youtuber i watched is a frugal crafter she's out of maine and then now i started watching a crochet lady and she's out of canada too i i just found that out today but you know when i sit in the office in the morning i eat my breakfast and then i i watch videos and then, then I go off to work and do my thing. And, and then with the YouTube stuff, it's kind of when COVID started. You know, I had time to do these. Because they do take some time and effort. You just can't film and get it all done in, in one sitting. You have to edit. You have to put them together. Um, you know, maybe add music to it, depending on how you want your video to be. You know, I haven't mastered all of that process yet, and, and I'm using the webcam to film this. I do have a video camera, El Cheapo one. It does okay. You know, when I film myself, I, I've been using that one. And then I have my phone, which works, you know, for like the jewelry tutorials. Uh, and and some other things. I don't use the phone a lot because I, I I guess I it's hard for me to find the videos later because I have so many photos on my phone. Okay, I made it all the way around, so I'm going to pull it tight. And and in the process of pulling it tight, it's also going to pull it up because I did not break this um, thread. Is it's still in there? So. Anyway, I'm going to do the best I can to pull it tight. And then we're going to finish it off. Oh, there we go. Get it pulled up. So then, see, it looks like a little, a little scrubby here. And I'm going to tie it off to this one 
that I found before. This is one of the original ones. So I tie it in a nice firm little knot and then tie off the other edges and sometimes I'll crochet a little handle to it but I probably won't with this one. I'm just going to tie it off and trim it up and there you go. You have a, a scrubby that matches our dishcloth. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you again.